Greetings, Benjamin J from Ben's Trains with another in the series. Well, back on the bench, getting ready to build or assemble a motor out of parts. So I thought I would do a quick video to document this. Now, I went through the parts box. This is an old pre-war motor, and the E-unit was dead. It wouldn't cycle, which is why it was in the parts box. So I thought I would put a uh, motor together using the parts I had, so I thought I would document it and do a quick video. Now, this is really simple to do. Of course, if you have the parts to do it with. But as long as you have the parts, it only takes a few minutes to assemble a Marx motor. So the very first thing we're going to do is install the armature. Now, one quick trip or one quick tip I want to point out is these armatures are made of copper. They have a copper plate, three of them, in fact. And uh, they get coated with oxide. Now, an easy way to clean this, of course, is with a pencil eraser and it's slightly abrasive and uh, an eraser works by absorption it absorbs graphite so you can take a pencil eraser and just rub this copper strip and uh, it'll remove the oxide and a lot of the junk and gunk on it without fearing scratching it or damaging it and uh, it's actually quite effective at cleaning these copper plates then after you've cleaned them, take a small screwdriver and just scrape between them. Just like that. You don't want these things shorting. And uh, a lot of graphite from the brushes will build up in this groove and actually short these plates. So, like I said, just a small screwdriver and just lightly scrape those grooves to make sure they're open. And of course you can spray the entire thing with alcohol. So now to install this, be aware that this bearing is keyed. There's a slot in the bottom of the bearing, so it only fits in that side plate one way. So what you have to do is, uh, what I do anyway, is line up the key, the keyway at the very bottom. Let me see if I can get a shot of this. You can see that keyway right there. So there's a groove in the bottom of that bearing. A lot of times people disassemble this motor, try to stick this armature back in, get that bearing misaligned, and it just binds the entire motor. A lot of the ones I have bought that wouldn't run was due to that very problem. Now on the motor itself, there's a small stud sticking up that that key slides over. So make sure that you have those two lined up. Then just drop in the armature, make sure it comes out on this side and the key is centered and in position. So let's get this lined up again. There we go. And as you can see, that is now flush and free to turn. So we've got that in position. All right, let me refocus the camera. Turn this over, grab your brush plate. The brush plate has a bearing in it. Line it up on the armature, slide it into position, and put on the nuts. Now they're rounded on the top and flat on the bottom, so make sure you put them on correctly. Now this is a pre-war motor, so I had to go through all my parts to find the uh, parts that would fit this. Because the pre-war motors and the post-war motors have lots of different parts that don't interchange. Okay, so we've installed the two nuts. We put a screw in the bottom. Use a screwdriver. Screw that down. Now before we do anything else, we're going to install the brushes just to make sure that this thing runs before we go any further. So I've already disconnected the E-unit from the coil. So very first thing I'm going to do is grab two brushes. Now these are used, but they should be more than good enough. Now, I use a small screwdriver. You can use a sewing needle. Make sure this is in focus here. And uh, go under that spring, lift it up out of the way, and push it over to the side. Take your brush. It has a groove in the top side. Drop the brush into position, 
snap the spring back down on top of it and uh, that groove is to lock that spring so the brush does not rotate same thing on the other side brush has a groove in the top drop it into position and put your spring on it all right so like I said it's uh, fairly straightforward now since I've done the bypass I'm going to connect the brush plate brush plate directly to the front side of the coil just like that make sure nothing's touching and we're going to grab our power supply our little bench transformer apply power here and see if it will run got a spark there we go so we know the motor is going to run no problem as you see so this is in you know, fairly rough condition but it was good enough and I wanted to do a video and I'm going to be assembling this so I figured I'd go ahead and uh, shoot the video as I did it so now the only thing really left to do is put on the intermediate gear intermediate gear of course drives the wheels put that in position I'm going to put a drop of oil on the center of it just like that I'm going to put a drop of oil on the uh, armature bearing I'm going to put a drop of oil in the wheel bearing on this side all right so our rear wheels have the studs now I've got my push rods here mismatched but good enough for this all right so geared side goes on this side we slide this into position we're going to put the stud directly at the top go to this side drop of oil stud directly at the top grab our vise I covered this yesterday so we just hang the wheels on the top and push the wheels on all right good enough get this out of the way like I said this is really straightforward it's really simple to do it all right go to this side add a drop of oil for the wheel bearing slide the wheel in position now this is a mismatched wheel but it's good enough for what I'm using it for another drop of oil on that wheel bearing line up the wheel grab the vise line this up and push the wheel on make sure you don't get it too tight there we go that's close enough now nothing's been soldered as far as our electrical connections but let's see how we did so let's see how this goes and as you see we have assembled a Marx motor from scratch really simple really straightforward to do this as you see this one's going to run forward only but it's going to run that's the neat thing about it and it's made completely out of junk just junk parts as long as your parts are good the motor will run but like I said before you go to the effort of pressing the wheels on always test the armature to make sure that the motor is running so now I will solder my connections and uh, I have to run a power line this wire goes down to the contactor I have to run a power line from here to this side of the coil solder that connection add an insulator here of course and I have a new motor so it's really really straightforward and it's really simple to build a Marx motor out of junk parts this was just stuff that was in the parts box and as you can see it's mismatched now to uh, add your push rods and your front mounting bar is really really straightforward 
and of course I don't have these peened yet but you snap on your push rods as you see push them all the way forward slide on your contactor or your main uh, mounting plate and you have assembled a motor completely out of parts so it's really really straightforward this is all mismatched parts but it's really not important the thing is the motor runs that's the neat thing about it so a pre-war motor made entirely out of junk we'll test it one more time and then uh, I will begin soldering the connections and get this ready to install in a locomotive as you see it's running just absolutely perfectly so I just want to do a quick video on how whoops on how to assemble a uh, Marx motor out of parts like I said it's really straightforward it's really simple to do it and these parts are junk parts I mean they really are as you can see they have seen better days but they work that's the important thing so in uh, how long did it take six minutes to completely assemble a Marx motor out of parts. It's straightforward, it's easy to do, it's a lot of fun. Once you learn how to do this, you've done it once or twice, you're an expert at it. And uh, you can repair anything, anything you can find on eBay that doesn't work, you can repair it as long as you have the parts to repair it with. Like I said, out of one of these motors, you can get enough parts to repair five or six others. You get the bearings, you get the brush plate, the springs, the brushes themselves, the coil, the axles, the wheels, the push rods, the armature, uh, virtually anything you need because no two motors are going to need exactly the same part. So out of one of these motors you can assemble or repair five or six others. Anyway, I just wanted to do a quick video on assembling a Marx motor from parts. It's straightforward, it's easy, and it's fun. And uh, like I said, once you've done this you can uh, uh, you're an expert at it, you know, one or two times and it's just uh, really, really simple. And once you have a way to pull the wheels off and then press them back on, you can fix anything you can find. It's straightforward, it's fun, it's simple, and uh, you can take some real junk and turn it into some pretty nice running Marx locomotives. So I'll get this uh, finished up, we'll drop it into a shell, I'll do a video later putting it on the uh, uh, layout and running it. But uh, I just want to do a quick video on how to assemble a motor from parts. So it's straightforward, it's easy, a lot of fun to do it. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. Ben's Trains at gmail.com. And as always, thank you for watching.